The video's technically starting now, it's right? It's fine, I don't care. Okay. Yeah, I was just... Yeah, we're cutting it right now. Um... Okay, we here. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to a new episode of 1K Combos. We got a very, very special guest tuning in. I'll let you do the honors, actually. Why? You, you want me to do the honors? Yeah, do the honors. All right, we got a Canadian national sportscaster here, a journalist, proud Scarborough native, um, Kayla Gray. <laughs> How you doing? Okay. I'm good. You How good? are you? I'm great, man. I'm, you know, some, some trying times Thanks right now. Thanks for having me. This is Setup. Yeah, we're, we're trying here. times and we're still surviving. We're here, we're here. We're in Saga. What's the studio called again? That production studio. Shout out to those guys, man. Um, hosting us here. First time shooting here, and I'm loving it already. The setup's nice. So, um, how's Little everything? Hardwood you floors. You're stepping up. All ain't easy. Shout out IKEA. We're here. <laughs> we're here. How's everything with you? Everything's going good. It's good? Yeah. Busy, yeah. Um, and I'm very blessed to say that because we are in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah. Um, but nah, I have no complaints. I think the stillness has really allowed me to see some things, and not really new things, but more so mm. like reminding me of like the tools that I have, the things that I'm equipped with, the people that I have around me. Um, and so yeah, maybe I'm that corny person, but I just like uh, I, I want not. Basically. Yeah, there's definitely a silver lining with this, and I feel like a lot of people obviously were negatively uh, negatively affected by this. But like you're saying, it gives us time to like just step back a bit, assess you know what we have, and kind of figure out what we are doing wrong and fix those type of issues. So, I mean, for me, I can attest to that too as well. I've been doing a lot of learning and growth during this period, but it is what it is. COVID's still here, you know. Yo, we're gonna be so like the depth of. I'm so excited to have conversations post pandemic. Yeah. I feel I feel like certain people there's gonna be some depth to them. 100. percent And I'm like, woo! The conversation is about to be solid. Some real transformations going on be, right, now. right? Yeah, for real sure. work. Y'all ain't ready for me <laughs> post pandemic, eh? <laughs> Yo, honestly, man, this is this is some some trying times that we're going through. But mm -hmm. um, a lot of us have adjusted our lives to it. You know, I th you're one of them, obviously. Um, right now, you have a, a show on the social TV. I've noticed that a lot of the the programming is done from at home. You know, that's something that's completely different. Hasn't really been done till now, I yeah. guess. But tell me a little bit about that. Like, how do you feel about that? Yeah, so basically, um, Marcy Ian, queen, a mentor, a friend, a f icon, um, she took a leave from the social uh, to run for office. Like, Marcy's the type of woman that's like, I'll talk about this racial injustice, but I'm also going to be about it and be in yeah. the streets, too. And that's that's something that's a, that's I think we all can learn different. from. And that's a different... That's a, there are levels to this work. <laughs> facts, um, facts. And so I've been blessed to work alongside the other ladies for a month and some. Um, but there's that. I also was hosting Sports Center from my house. <laughs> <laughs> And I also had a show, uh, Rest in Peace, Sports AM by TSN, and that was also done by my in my house. Mm -hmm. So my little condo was basically a studio. Is basic was a studio for like four different, three or four different shows, mm -hmm. um, and so that was fun. And it's crazy because you know when I first started and I got into journalism school. After that, like I went small market and then smaller market. And I had to shoot everything. I had to edit everything. I had to frame myself up. All that shit. Like, I put in work. But the wild thing is, is this time was, again, a reminder of tools. So it was like, yeah, girl, you're fine. Like, you know how to shoot. Good, you know yeah. how to, you're good, yeah, right? You and so, all, yeah. yeah. And so, and I, I, I love that, like, starting from scratch DIY stuff anyways. Yeah. Um, so I really got to, like, tap into that. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of like with the hosting and, and whatnot, like that's just sort of been what my experience has been like from the work front. Um, and then it's also like, I mean, you know, like you want things a certain way aesthetically, 100%. Yeah, 100%. you want things to look a certain way. I feel like when you talk to like, um, I don't consider myself a creative, but when you talk to creatives or people in the industry, there was this like hurry up when this all started. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do to be different? Yeah. How do I separate myself, separate myself yeah. in this time? And then like what do, like how do I push content? And I feel like there was so much oversaturation of content, <laughs> and you had to like yeah. tell everyone like, "Yo, chill your shit," Relax. Yeah, yeah. because down. right now we are in an in between. Like this is not the final destination. 
this is the in between right now. And I feel like there was so much hurry up because we we just try to adapt and we try to like take situations and that's mm. just sort of how we're built, right? Like we just want to thrive in anything. Yeah, yeah. But then you kind of have to realize like we're not meant to thrive in this moment. We're just meant to survive in this moment. And so with that, it's like there's so much shedding and letting go of like perfection, especially that's had to like take place in like broadcasting. Mm. So like, man, I'd be hosting shows and the whole thing shut down. Okay. Like fade to black. That's like, crazy. Not, like gone. Yeah. Or like you'd be reading your highlights. Like usually I'll be in a studio and I'm reading my highlights from like a paper and it's like, yeah. nah, you have to memorize those at home. <laughs> like you ain't got no prompter it's here. Completely different, yeah. Right. So you're just sort of flexing your muscles in different like areas. And to me, that's been like crazy. I, I, I mean, I think I've grown a lot as a broadcaster mm. in this time. And then, of course, like, with everything that's been going on and the conversations that have been so important during this time, like, you know, especially um, since the murder of George Floyd. But to be clear, yeah. like, we have been having these conversations forever. Mm -hmm. It feels as though we can all understand that there has been a racial reckoning. Um, and so for me, in sport, as much as I feel like the work that I've done leading up to this point, like, I covered a championship team, yeah. has been good. Like, I'm most proud of the work that I've done in the middle of a pandemic. I, that's, I, I'm glad that you brought that up because that was something that I wanted to talk about, especially with you. I mean, during, like, I'd say April, May, when Black Lives Matter was at its height, I've noticed you at the forefront of a lot of subjects. I mean, I've seen people attacking you for certain things. <laughs> they still attacking they're me. They still attacking you this day? That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, that's, that's, that's hate. And, but. you know, yeah, 100%. And I think that's a conversation that needed to be held. And I'm I'm very glad that you're you're part of that, you know. So talk about that and, like, what were some of the experiences you had with that Black Lives Matter being at that forefront, I guess. Yeah, I think more so like the forefront of Canadian media yeah. and that industry. Um, you know, listen, if you've known me over the years or you know me, period, you know that this is not a new conversation. I've just started. Yeah. I think I've always been outspoken. Yeah. The tolerance for what I say has just been a little bit easier yeah. during yeah. this time. Yeah. Um, but the experience for me, like, I just remember getting like 30 seconds into that horrific video of George Floyd. And there was this sort of like understanding, but this like, I don't even know how to explain the feeling. It was this understanding of like, yo, the, the time is now mm -hmm. like speak up. Like you got a little son that's watching you. That could have been your boy. Like you better use your, your platform, your mouth, your thoughts and all the tools that you have right now to try yeah. to affect change. And if you get fired, you get fired. It is what it is. And it is what it is. Yeah. And I think that like before what I will admit is like, I was worried about getting fired. I was worried about getting in trouble. But for me at that time, like the stakes were just far too high for me to stay silent. And when you have that acceptance of like, come up, come what may, mm -hmm. then I feel like you, you go like, 20 times harder you're, that's in that position you're so dangerous in a sense where you can make the most change i feel like when people let their job and like i'm not not to blame them or not but when you let yeah because it's that's what we've been taught jobs, exactly. yeah like it's, you have to survive that's why you know nice. black people have stayed kind of on the quiet side yeah in navigating the workspace but you don't want to you don't want to you don't want to rock bag. the boat exactly. and and yeah. to me you know, there has been a process of unconditioning over the last couple of months, too, with yeah. that, right? Like, for example, you are always told, like, you should be so lucky to be in your job. So lucky in to you, be in your only. field. You hear that a lot? All the time. As a woman, as a woman of color, because yeah. there's so very, f first of all, there's that's no, That's basically another thing I want to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then you're like, nah, buck that. Like, check the receipts. Like I'm really have, good at what I do, resume, and yeah. it takes it takes a while for you to like settle into that. Yeah. Like nobody can touch what I do because I'm fucking great. <laughs> like and and, and I and like I feel they, like they and, and it took they me a facts. long while to get there, yeah. but like now we're here. And when you get to that point of like confidence and like that confidence mixed with like a don't give a fuck about what they're going to do oh, to you because the yeah. stakes are so high, yeah. you become dangerous 100%. and you become lethal and you become and I just feel like your work becomes more important because they're you, yeah, you realize that, sure, there is shit to lose, but then you're like, but George Floyd lost his motherfucking life. Like, he can't, he can't speak now. He can't speak now. Mm. Breonna Taylor cannot speak now. So many people cannot speak now. You can do that, and that's, like, the bare minimum of what you can do. Yeah. And so... 
for me, I think that's kind of what fired me up. But I think to be clear, like the easiest thing for me to do is to use a platform that is the easiest accessible. My social media, you know, when I do stuff on camera, yeah. when I do, t when I use Twitter, that's the easy shit. I think people might get it messed up where they think that that's all that I do. And that's, but if yeah. you know me that, you know, <laughs> I'm doing 20 times of what I'm doing yeah. behind the scenes. Yeah. Cause that to me is like the important stuff, stuff, right? That's where like a lot of the work gets done. That's you know? where most of the work should yeah, get done. For sure. And you know, it's funny, like, you know, you could be loud in some ways, but also loud in other ways too. Mm. And, and you know, while I think I am, I can't be a loud person. I could be blunt and yeah. straight to it. Like I'm even louder behind the scenes in the work that I do and the things that I'm trying to put together for my community. Um, and so, yeah, like the hate has come. And at first it used to bother me because I am still a baby and I'm still impressionable. Yeah, it's tough to, it's tough to receive hate. And, that, that and, it, and it's you know? tough to receive yeah. hate and criticism, but you're also talking to someone who's like, you know, got into some really again. fucked up situations growing up. Yeah. Like, you know, I moved out at 15. Um, I was in a really abusive relationship where I almost died. Like, there are so many things that have happened to me in my life that, like, I've had to kind of go back to during this time to say, like, you are built for this. Mm. Like, you, <laughs> like, literally your essence is surviving. Yeah, so I'm it's like sad. what Tom behind his computer <laughs> With his four followers, has to say about you because he's mad that you're speaking. He's probably not even using fake. Yeah, real yeah account, well, it's you know? not. Yeah, like yeah. He, he's mad because you're speaking facts. Yeah. And you know, there's Karens out there that are uncomfortable because you're Don't calling them out on their shit. Like, what does that really matter to yeah. you? Yeah. Like, what does that really matter to you? And and you know, I think also too is it's like it's so much bigger than me, and I I've never and it's wild. Like I've never felt more in my purpose than I have right in now. a lot right now. That's amazing. And it's That's messed amazing. up because of the circumstance and how negative everything's been. Yeah. But I feel like when God calls you to do something, That's like it. when you get called to do something, like you pick up the damn phone and I'm very clear on why I'm here. And, and I think that's very important. And that's with everything too. I mean, even with journalism, that's obviously something that felt right to you, you know? Yeah. I mean? So being outspoken and, and voicing your opinion is something that just is natural. Yeah. And, and I feel yeah. like, you know, some people were like, well, Kayla, that's not how journalist moves. There has to be neutrality to it. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, man, stop this. It's like, there's no neutrality in watching people that look like you die. I don't know how you sit by and try to hold up any type of journalistic integrity when there's no integrity in society right yeah. here right now yeah and so for me i'm like now nah, we're doing things different this we're doing things different 100%. because doing things a certain way for a long time never got us any results yeah and so whatever if y'all want to say that i sacrificed my journalistic integrity to speak up for something i firmly believed in then so fucking be it to be clear i'm in the entertainment industry not the news industry <laughs> entertainers I entertain they speak they have opinion exactly they're not afraid to say it. They're and not I, afraid to I say it. I think a big reason of why a lot of people are applauding you for doing that is because seeing like our representation being killed off, it, it gets tiring. Yeah. When you're on social media consistently scrolling about different issues, whether it's racism, um, whether it's just oppression, every day, it's like, damn, like, when is this? What else, what else am I going to see? Yeah. That's the, only, I, that's the only way I'm seeing I think myself what represented. I was like, I think what also called me to like just sort of you know, call some shit out. But also, like, there were some interviews I refused doing yeah. and questions I refused answering because I'm like, nah, you're not going to profit off of our pain. No, that's, yeah. Like, yeah. And, you know, we were seeing athletes time and time again coming out and sharing their stories, and yeah. they were hurtful, they were painful. But, like, why are we asking them to revisit trauma for what? Mm -hmm. You're yeah, not going to do anything when, they when they're when they honest and, and go to a certain place. Yeah. What are you about to do with that after? You're just looking for a hot clip. And so there was some times where I had to be like, nah, we're not doing that. Yeah. And I think for me, too, it was just like, I did not want people that look like me to get used to seeing people look like them get killed. Mm -hmm. That is not normal. Definitely and right. I feel like over time it almost started to become normal. And I feel like that's why we see footage of ourselves being brutalized because it's, just, and, I, and I truly believe because we're in society's <laughs> mind, we're no longer seen as human. So they're just like, yeah, it's just another person. In a, in a just lot another of parts, name. Yeah. Just another and it's like, that's what's, I don't want anyone that looks like us to believe that for themselves. And I think a big reason why it's always circulated is because, like, sens sensationalism sells, right? 
Like you're just yeah. saying that in an industry that's based off entertainment, the most viral things often become viral because it's interesting or not even not even interesting, but it's just because it's yeah it's sensational. Yeah, you know? and I so. think and I think maybe why you know I was kind of like that sore thumb is because in Canadian sports media there is no other black woman that's another thing too you're you're <laughs> often not even only representing yourself but so many other black women in the industry which is terrifying it's completely terrifying i mean talk about that experience like how does it feel to be yeah like know? so when i made my debut on sports i was the first black woman to host a canadian yeah. sports highlight show Thank you. uh it's good but also pretty sad that it was in 2018 <laughs> uh so yeah just, there's that on that um yeah, like, I think for me, uh, I'm not going to lie, there's a lot of pressure being, well, at the time, being the only. Yeah. But I think from Jump Street, I knew I knew that I didn't want to. Like, you could be the first, but just make sure you're not the only. Yeah. So how I move behind the scenes is, like, advocating for other people and, like, pushing other names forward because I'm like, yo, I can't be resident black it, yeah. up in this bitch. It's, like, it's a weird feeling. Yes, it's, it's weird, and I think it, you know, you look at, say, the Daniel Camerons of yeah. the world. Losers. <laughs> but, like, they enjoy being the only in the room. It's, it's an idiot. And they will do anything to remain the only in the room. That, yeah. And it? that is some, like, sick-ass, like, slave mentality type of shit that you yeah, can't fuck. I and so, the for it, but it's a, yeah, yeah it's like, it's, it's just... And so, for me, like, there was just a lot of pressure because, you know, I am who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm off the cuff. I say what I say. But it's got it's got you to where you are right yeah, now. Yeah, but you know? but let's be honest. Like you either like me or you don't. And I'm not for everyone. And if I was for everyone, then I would be really upset because if you are for everyone, then you got to check yourself because it's, that means you're a people pleaser. It's crazy because me and me and my friends were literally just talking about that being a yes man. You Yo, know, that's the and craziest, I'm not that. That's yeah. Listen, there is like no in between with me. You yeah. either mess with me or you don't. And that's not a bad thing. And again, I like me. So it's like I it's not like I if I offend someone, of course, I'm going to take that to heart and see how I can change to, mm -hmm. you know, but like if you, if it's a, if it goes as simple as like, yeah, I just don't like I don't like you. I don't like the way you sound. I don't like your opinion. I don't like that. I'm cool with that yeah. because there's other people that do like me mm -hmm. and thankfully people that pay me like me, hopefully. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. for me, it's like it's just there's no in between. And so with that being said, you don't want to fuck it up for the next person, right? Yeah. Like, because it's just you, I think what kind of kept me a little bit more sheltered and quiet was the fact that I was scared that if I said the wrong thing or messed up, the next I might the cut all con yeah. like, all chances for the girl after me. Yeah. And then eventually you just have to shed that and, you know, leave that at the door and just completely show up as yourself because what I then learned was... Kayla, when you show up fully as yourself, one, you thrive, two, you give your best work, mm -hmm. three, you leave nothing else left for imagination yeah. or interpretation, um, but four, you give other people permission to show up as themselves. I think a big part of that, too, is like these companies are hiring you because they want you. They yeah, don't want, they don't want a version that's right, acceptable right. To but, them. but yeah, that, they do that with white. Tricky. They do that with white people now. Yeah, yeah. They've done that with white people. Yeah. What the issue is with black people is they want you but for, just you and that's quota? it and quota yeah, yeah and yeah. that is hard it's tough and it's not to say that i got listen again it goes back to check the receipts i'm good at what i do listen i can pull up the stats right now Wait, yeah, shit. The, the, viewer, the viewers can pull up the stats themselves but right yeah, but yeah. at the end of the day it's like i understand why people might say that like huh kayla's only been hired or put in certain you, you places think so? you can yeah i can see why because really? I, because it's just been me, really, yeah, and no one has followed after, yeah. So I can see why the logic might take you there, but then you're like, nah, I earned everything, I you, deserve that you've done, shit. Yeah, you've done your I thing. built my way up to yeah. get to where I'm at, and no one can take that away from mm -hmm. me. But surface level, yeah, sure, it's fine because that has been the trend for hiring practices across yeah. all industries in our country. Diversification, that's with anything too, politics, right. yeah, yeah and it's see. like you know we. I think we can kind of like even elevate the conversation for those that have the capacity. Like representation is like not enough. Like, and you know, that's like, <gasps> watch your pearls when Kayla yeah, says that yeah. misrepresentation herself. <laughs> but like, I'm realizing like it is not enough to throw black people on the TV screen. Like 
Throw them also in your boardrooms. Yep. Throw them also in your in your rooms where you make hiring decisions. Put them at the tables, yeah. Throw them also at the top where we don't see them. Yeah. Throw them in the producer chair. Throw them in the director. Like, throw them where they're calling the shots. Yeah. Because here's the thing. My power, outside of the money that I can lay down for programs that I want to make, coming soon, by the way, um, my power is just my voice and my presence on TV. I can't hire anybody. Yeah. Like, I really can't hire anyone. But, like, if you throw someone black in an executive suite mm -hmm. that's that a whole can hire, that is a game changer yeah. right there. And that's the scary thing that a lot of these corporations that are mostly whitely run, yeah. they don't want to talk about that part. I have a question for you. So, speaking on just having representation in places of power, what are your thoughts on having, I guess you could say, black people – Pairing with other people in power that aren't necessarily, like, like their ideals don't necessarily agree with each other. And I think so an like example peer -to -peer of like peer to peer mentorship. Or no, 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 like an example I would say is like the Ice Cube and Donald Trump situation. I don't know Whatever if you heard about that. Yeah. So like obviously their ideals don't align. Trump has different um, ideals and whatnot than yeah, Ice Cube does. Yeah, he's just racist. There's been instances for sure, 100. percent Um, but like at the end of the day, nah, the he's business. Just, he's just like. A racist. Yeah, yeah, clearly. There's footage of that. You know what I'm saying? Footage. <laughs> what do you care about? What are your thoughts on Trump? Let me hear this. Let me start there. You want to talk about that man? <sighs> I mean, wasn't the, the debate, was it? Yes, it was yesterday, right? Yeah, it was yesterday. Yeah, yeah. I mean. He's a racist. Like, I, he's a bigot. He's yeah. a racist. He's a lie. He's a cheat. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I don't know how much more, like, who are these undecided voters? I I'm know. I'm trying to figure out how the hell you're undecided at this point. Now let's be very clear. This is a lesser of evil because Joe Biden's not no Obama. Yeah. Okay. But the issue is is Donald Trump is just so incompetent. It amazes me how that a country let him be in power. Listen, after you got after you got elected, after I said anything's possible. No, but then also you look at the tax stuff and like sure we. You always talk about the taxes, he says. It's like, nah, to me what that says is when you are broke, you are desperate. Yeah. And you are willing to talk. You are willing to do anything when you're desperate, including sleep with the enemy if you want to. Well, that's, and that's problematic. That's what I want to talk about, too, because if you're sleeping with the enemy, at the forefront, like the business deal that's happening, it's still getting done, but obviously the ideals aren't aligning. But so it's like integrity. Your, that's the thing, too. You're sacrificing integrity. Yeah, and, and I think it goes back to your partnership question about yeah. pairing up with opposites yeah. is you have to align somewhere. So yeah. like for me, like, you know, pillars of m my being and, and work have to be integrity and, yeah. and e excellence. And so when I say excellence, excellence can mean like I've been in rooms with people that completely disagree with me, mm -hmm. but I need them. You know, I need that diversity of thought and I need different eyes and I need someone to be like, nah, that's a whack ass idea. It's yeah. not going to float. Yeah. Because to me, then that helps refi refine my shit. Yeah. And then it also helps me to maybe tweak it, maybe take it off the table, maybe push back. And that might change. Like that is possible. There is possible. There's a possibility there for that type of alignment, that type of collaboration. But that person also has to have integrity and excellence at and their it, core, too. Yeah. And so to me, this is why I don't really agree with the Ice Cube, Donald Trump, because it's just the core of it. It's just not. It's not. And I think the cores have the core of it has to align mm -hmm. because that's how you make it sustainable, long lasting legacy shit. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just quick Band-Aid shit. Yeah. Because at some point, you can plant you can plant flowers. You could be all kumbaya, all that stuff. But it's going to rot at if the, the root. Soil, yeah, the it's going to rot. Good, you're yeah. going to smell that. You. Like, you're going to you. smell it. So, that I don't know. That's what that's my thoughts but on that. I like I like what you're saying, though, about just having differing thoughts. Because it's, it's exactly what we were saying before. Having Being being surrounded by yes men is the quickest way, in my opinion, just to Once you to start you. surrounding yourself, once you can, <sighs> even, like, where I'm at now, right? Yeah. Like, you'll start to to see some things shift and change. I mean, you like everyone knows this. Yeah. Like, and once you start to see that stuff shift and change, you got to start cutting. Mm -hmm. And it's not negative. Like, it's part of the process. It's called pruning. Yeah, you prune so you can grow <laughs> different branches mm -hmm. or fruit, right? Um. And so, yeah, it's part of the process of growth, but people don't like to keep it real because, and, and I feel like maybe I'll flip this to you because it is such a man thing or it's a, it's no, a, no, keep going, it's, keep kinda, going. it's more so, so like when I talk to dudes, right? Like yeah. they've got friends that are day, like when they say day, day one. ones, 
they mean day ones. Yeah, like they could have met in the hospital when they were born, <laughs> day ones. Okay. But with women, there's a certain type of like adaptability where like our friends, we're not some time ish, but we move with seasons with our people. I don't know if the, maybe I'm being sexist. No, no, no. Maybe I'm, think, but I, there's a, I think there's this level of um, depth, depth and loyalty that men like to kind of go so hard for with yeah. loyalty. And I think women are loyal. Yeah. But I think loyalty to me might be mean different to say the average man. man. Yeah. So I, I, I do see some truth in that because I feel like the average male relationship isn't, I don't think it has the depth that, that women do. Like I can't go to like some, like from my, from my experience, like there's some friends that I can't go to and talk about and just let it all out on them. You know what I'm so saying? Are those your friends or your acquaintances? I call them acquaintances. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I do have friends that I could do that with, but I say like the average male relationship, I think that's a reason why a lot of them aren't as, like I was just saying, as deep. Mm. You know what I'm saying? With women though, there's some relationships that are on and off, you know. There's their friends one season, the next season they're Yeah, like, but but that's I think to me it's not some time ishness because I, I can recognize that I have really I've had relationships like that too. Yeah. There is a level of self awareness. Mm. And so there's something that stirs in you when you are not being served anymore. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, like we're all selfish people. Hundred percent. Right? It's, it's not, yeah. So it's like in our friendships, like, you get something out of me, and I also get something out of you. And so when I stop getting something out of you... Like, what am I here for? What are we here for? Yeah. And you just have to be, like, very clear, open, and honest about that, and then you shift and, and you adjust. Like, there are some friends of mine I've I've had for 20... How old am I? 27? 20 years. That's, yeah. 20 years. <sighs> so ask me if I see them every day. Ask them if I see Please. them every month. Please. I don't. Yeah. But when we see each other, we key key like it's like it's, you know, you yeah. have friends like that that just like, you know, and, and it's funny because I was talking about soulmates. And to me, soulmate is not romantical at all. It doesn't have to be. Nah. And I think that's I don't even confused. think it's romantic. You don't think so at all? Period. You, can't, you don't think soulmates can be romantic? I think it can. But yeah. like to me, life has shown me that my soulmates are my girlfriends. Mm. Like. You know, I bought a house, and the first call was my best friend. Yeah, she's like... Like, that's your person, right? Yeah. Like, it's not... I mean, also single, so who the hell else was I going to call? <laughs> but, <laughs> but I mean, Yo. like, even if I wasn't, I would still call yeah, her first. Yeah, like, yeah. and and that to me is like, yeah, I just think your, your, your friends are your soulmates. Yeah. Because they'll ride with you through thick and thin, the highs and lows, through partners, through t- seasons changing. Mm-hmm. I think the biggest issue um just with friends in general is i think there's a, a there's too much value placed on like the amount of time that you know someone for you know what yeah, I'm yeah it's like it's, uh, but relationships are the same way yeah i could say that no relationships I, I'm, I'm guilty of that relationships too, I'll be honest. are the same you way think so? what yeah some relationships stack years like they stack chips at a freaking crazy. gambling suite it's, it's crazy. insane oh my god we made it to a year oh my god we made it to two years Oh my so god, we made it to ten years. Celebrate, celebrate! No, like, you ever, you ever see? Sorry to interrupt. You ever see those Instagram po- like stories and shit? Would be like, oh, happy two months. I'm like, bro, yo, shut I, the I hell know. up. What it's the youngest here? man. From here, man. It's, I can understand it because that's what you just think longevity. Yeah. But you're chasing this dream of like the high school sweetheart. Yeah. You know what is that? Yeah. What is that? Where it's like you know, listen, I've been in relationships for a year mm-hmm. that like didn't serve me. And my growth, as much as, like, a four-, six-month relationship has. Yeah. It, like, t- time doesn't matter in those sense, in that sense, it really right? Yeah. It really does not. But I think people get confused because they think, you know, we're... F- and some people, whatever, they'll be together forever. Cool. Yeah. Lucky. Yeah. Um, That's what I call, like to call this. Yeah, yeah, cool. Like I, like I said, there's a mix of bounces that have to go your way. But, like, you know, at the same time, it's like some people stay in stuff for far longer than they need to. Mm. They know they got to go. And it's like they, they'll they stay, but then they won't, like, they like, they know they're not happy, but they'll stay, like, five years extra because of that pride. It's just, pride. Yeah, it's ego. That's crazy, it's ego. too, though. Yeah. It's I want to talk about that because, like, I know they're – I know every relationship is not perfect. You know what I'm saying? People will disagree on something. You're coming from two different households. Yeah. You're going to disagree on something, right? So it's like, at what point do you say, this isn't for me? 
you know what I'm saying? Oh like, at gosh. what point is it like, yo, I gotta, I gotta keep it moving? Because like, I know a lot of people that are in those type of relationships that want to stay in them just because they don't want to be looked at from their friends. Is like, you know, yeah, you have to, sh- you have to change that shit. You know, it's crazy. Um, I think when you stop recognizing yourself. What do you mean by that? Like there, ha- like there's a point, like in other relationships I've been been in, where I did not recognize my own voice. You felt like your voice was being overshadowed a bit? Overshadowed, like, but yeah. then also suppressed in a way. Mm. And it's like, it's like people think that like love and relationships are supposed to be like this, your heart's supposed it's to be busy. fast, and you're supposed to be all nervous, and all this stuff. And it's like, to me, I feel like I'll know that I found the one when I'm completely calm. Yeah. And mm. then it's like, yeah, I, I don't know, for me, like, I knew to step away from certain situations the minute that I stopped hearing myself think. Mm -hmm. And I start, I felt, I feel like certain times you get into autopilot. Yeah. Right? Like, it's not to say that you're like looking for other things or whatever. We're all human. We all like to get flirted with outside of relationships. If you don't, it's it's natural. It's it's natural. natural. If you don't, you're a freaking liar. (laughs) Um, But it's just like, it's not like you're not growing anymore. You yeah. know when you are not growing and you plateau. But also to be clear, like there's ebbs and flows in a relationship. Sometimes yeah. it's gonna be exciting. Sometimes it's going to be boring as shit. So, but it's it's about how long is that? Is that you know that? Yeah, like thing. I it's again, like, it's like when it's are tough. you no longer growing? Because also then with relationships, when you are in a long term one. It also becomes a business partnership. That is true. You are paying You're rent. You are paying bills. Yeah. You are pay- and that can take suck the. I know fun a couple. I know a couple. I know a couple dudes are getting the Birkin bags for the girl too. I don't. Why are you getting the Birkin bags? I'm not saying no names. I'm not saying no names. Why? Just, Why? Okay. <laughs> Who, okay. So, on that subject, I always am curious. Like, are you getting the Birkin bag for your girl because she wants it, or are you getting the Birkin bag for yourself so you could tell your boys you got it? You're getting the Birkin bag for their girl because they're simp's. What is that? Like a simp? What is a simp? Are we learning know, new words here? You know, you know what a simp is? Yo, you're young, so you're 93. Stop. <laughs> <this>. <laughs> a simp is basically someone who just, I would say, agrees to everything a woman says with hopes of getting uh, with her. You know, what I'm saying with hooking up with people. Her. Do that. That's Kidding. I know that. I am I gonna know reach do. over this table right ah! now. Um, Don't do that. Yeah, no, like so I think a lot of times, like even like with our dating scene right now, you see that behavior all the time. Really? One hundred percent. One that people will just do whatever. They'll do whatever for the So I can just ask God buy buy me a Birkin and you they'll just kidding like, me? you can get yeah, you can get three of them by this weekend. What the hell? Well, you didn't notice? <laughs> no, I didn't oh, know man, that. Shit. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, That's, nah, yeah. Like, yes. uh, but I think yeah, sure, it's for the girl. Yeah, but it's also to say that you got the girl. That's true, but how? It's one thing to get a girl. Come on, people you? aren't that. People aren't that like giving. There's a lot of ego that people do not like to acknowledge. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I can agree with that. Like, I can agree with for that. example. All these, like, I, sometimes I'm in the shade room and they have, like, these uh, so-and-so bought so-and-so a Lamborghini. <sighs> Why you got to film that shit? If it was a really a gift, you ain't got to film it. Of course. Okay. Of course. It's for the intention. It, thank you. You know what I'm saying? Wow, he got her a... Uh, like, there's a little bit of a but, little bit of, of ego stroke in but that. But this is the thing, though. It's one thing to get a girl, but can you keep her? No. Exactly. Not you with can, a Birkin to... Like, if you if you get in some... That's some also, like, ass. I don't even know how much those things cost. The women, it's, it's really, bag, the women really enjoy Birkins. Maybe that is a question I need to ask like my Birkins, girlfriends. Right? Yeah, it's a thing. Yeah, so Birkins, you, the, the Gucci bags. Why, because it's, like, wrapped about? It's just, like, that, too. Yeah, this is glorified in media. Um, it's, don't get it's me expensive. a Birkin bag. Make me a mortgage payment. How about that? <laughs> 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 big facts. That's big facts. But that's, that's just so... It goes to show you where a lot of people's heads are at. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And this is why, like, <laughs> yo, it's natural selection with me, eh? I'm trying to build. Okay? Mm. I'm not trying to buy. I'm trying to build. That's a big fact. So if you want to buy materialistic stuff, like, but that's also, like, listen, I also understand that I talk like I'm a 50-year-old. I was going to say, I told you this yesterday. Yeah. You're, like, 45. Yeah, I, feel, I, I do feel 45. But that's not a bad thing. Uh, it is. You think so? It's a Michael Jackson effect, oh right? So, not nah, rest there? in peace. But oh. I, I say that because um, I worry. Like, there was a part of Michael Jackson that wants to be a kid a little bit. There's a mm. part of Kayla sometimes that wants to be a kid and act a, a reckless mess. Yeah. But I have just so much to lose. Yeah. And so 
I battle with feeling unsafe all the time, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, if I say have a drink, I I count my drinks. Yeah. If I say something to someone, I watch what I say. I watch who I'm around. I like you're just watching your behavior wherever you go. Do yeah. you ever feel the need to like you have to kind of just let you have to obviously in your position, but do you ever feel the need personally kind of just to let go and just relax a bit? No, I want to, I I want to. Yeah. And I did one time and I and I got burned. You got burned for a minute. So after that it's like it's tough to do this again. It's tough to do it's tough yeah. to do it when here's the thing that I've found and it's kind of like why celebrities date celebrities because yeah. they understand. Yeah. Um, but they're also people with a lot to lose. When you hang out with people that with nothing to lose, oh man, that's a then they be acting dynamic. like they ain't got nothing to lose. They be acting a, a goddamn mess. Just listen, the phone's gonna be on you, recording everything. Oh, Exa and exactly. then that's when it goes to like you're saying shade room and that, stuff like that's that. It's crazy, and that's what it messes with your bag. Yeah, and I have a little one that I have to provide for. Yeah, and I'm not playing with it's that. It's not just yourself you're worrying about. Yeah, yeah, and even if it was just myself, I think I would carry myself the same way. Mm. Like, listen. The reason why at the beginning I would never tell anyone that I got kicked out of school or the reason why I would never tell anyone about my past in like as a teenager is because I was so fearful that that might rob opportunities for yeah. me. I mean, it's it's not going to. Yeah. No one's going to expose me on anything because yeah. I'm a very open book. But these are things that you have to think about. I think in today's day and age, too. Obviously, people will judge you off of those things. Oh, my God. And I think this is so weird, too, because people act like they're not, like, people aren't capable of change. Totally. You know what I'm saying? And when you don't think people are capable of change, then you've... You yourself are already digging yourself a hole. I mean, this can sound I mean? so terrible. I'm probably going to get ripped apart for this. But, like, <laughs> if people can't change, then, like, if you get locked up, then just kill kill me. Yeah. If there's, I can't there's change, then there's no point yeah. of me accepting my, sacrif accepting my consequence yeah. and coming out into the real world again... There's, there's nothing you can do. There's like, what? What's the point of? Thank you. You know, what I mean, I I agree with that. Yeah, that's tough. That. And, but I also like, you know, that brings up cancel culture. I don't believe cancel culture exists. I think cancel culture is such a sensitive like topic. It's not it's, sensitive. No, I'm saying in in the sense that people that are in that culture are sensitive themselves. Yeah. Like like I never see someone who said that who got canceled actually get canceled. Here's where I'm at with things. Let me hear this. Yeah. I'm gonna probably say some something that rubs somebody wrong or do yeah. something that's that has done someone wrong. Yeah. Um but the issue is is when you truly are like what I believe mm -hmm. is when I'm truly sorry, I've I throw up my hands and I'm like I cannot police how you deal with me saying sorry. I can't police how you heal. Yeah. So you heal, and if in that healing you feel like you want to rock with me moving forward, I'm blessed. Thank you so much. I'm grateful. Thank yeah. you for yeah. giving me a second chance. Yeah. And hopefully I won't prove that second chance wrong. But in your healing, if you feel like to protect your, your peace and your health and your sanity and your money – you're like, yo, I cannot rock with you. Yeah. Thank you so much also. You're doing the work for me, in a sense. Well, not even that, but also it's like, I cannot police how you heal. That is called, a, like, a true accountability is just accepting what other people, you, I was wrong. Mm -hmm. So from that point, I cannot tell you how and how you should feel about me after I was wrong. Yeah, it's not your job to in the yeah, first place. So yeah, so if I get canceled, that's on me. <laughs> I shouldn't have messed up the first time. <sighs> But that's so, this is the thing with cancel culture, too, is like, It who, doesn't who, exist. You don't think it exists? It doesn't. Nah, I swear there's one or two instances where it actually, like, someone actually got canceled from it. Really? Like, they lost Tory their Lanes sales. is still walking around, that's living a, that's his, dropping. A whole, that's a whole different, ah. Oh, yeah, R. Kelly. Yeah, but who's still bumping R. Kelly's music? Just people. You kidding me? Yeah. I've heard R. Kelly. People. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I'm, okay. I'm pissed I have the same last name as him. Um. <laughs> But yeah, no, like, I think with cancel culture, too, I think a lot of it is just people regurgitating shit that's in the, like within their own bubble. Like, yeah. people that are within culture. We are a product of repeat, right? So yeah. it's like, you know, I mean, this might be a little bit uh, crazy. Let's go there. Uh, you know, there. thought is a repeated thing. Yeah. Like, how you, you speaking a full sentence is just repeating words that you learned over yeah. time right like an original this is the thing too is original, an original idea very, is that a thing in no you know what i mean like i don't believe in original thought i think 
I don't believe in an original idea. I believed in an influenced idea. Ah, that's a bar right there. Okay. Might have to quote that that's after. Just, that's just what Shit. I'm to say about that. Yeah, you are, I got a couple gold stars we can just leave you <laughs> No, I'm talking. But yeah, this cancel culture is tricky, man. I don't know how I feel about it, but... um, You don't have to feel anything about it. You're not canceled. I might be in the future. Who Ooh, knows, are you trying to get canceled? Listen, all I'm saying is my opinions are what I am. I'm not going to... I'm not gonna have sway you changed an opin- opinion though. Has someone like, have you said an opinion and someone's like, "But what about?" And then you're like, "Yeah, let me just change that." Okay, so what's the difference between actually like I think we gotta normalize changing your opinion after you learn new information. Yeah, that's what I'm asking you. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it's but like you were like, "My opinion is my opinion." Yeah, like I, I'll, I'll stay strong with my opinion <laughs> okay. unless until I find something that's like, "Okay, I'm wrong." I'll admit I'm wrong, but. I'm going to stay strong with my opinion. Mm-hmm. There has been a few times where I'm like, okay. Yeah, yeah. like when you talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Just drink your water, dude. Yeah, yeah, let, mm-hmm. let me just sit down for a little bit, guys. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you want to take a hat? No, I'm joking. Um, yeah, so I think I have changed my opinion with certain things, but for the most part, I try to just stay firm with what I believe in. I think when you when you change your opinion to please others, that's when you're just sacrificing a part of yourself. Mm-hmm. And that's just about staying true to yourself. I you think know? I'm... I, listen, you're stronger than me. Hell no. My opinion flip-flops, probably. You got to rip the most on, like... During know, black light. Yeah, what are you talking about? So yeah. you your opinion changes. What are you talking about? Uh, not like that. No, my opinion can flip-flop. Like, I can have a full conversation with you and say, I mm. think point A, and you're like, yeah, but point Z is way... That's true. Way, way logical. I'm fine with that. That's, yeah. What I'm. What are my non-negotiables are my core values. Yeah. And That's, as long as those stay solid, then I'm cool yeah. with the opinions, the thought, and perception changing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can agree with that. I, that makes complete sense. I think... Changing your opinion isn't always a bad thing. No, it's never, it's a, never bad a bad thing. thing. I've changed my opinion on people all the time. Really? Yeah. I feel like you're a great debater. Has anybody yeah, told you that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I think I am. Where did that start? Um, like, at what moment did you say, yeah, like, I, I need to get I into da- this? I dated a thug. That's crazy. Where are you from? I don't want to call him a thug. Let's go he say was a, oh, He was crazy. a hood dude with great intentions. Hood. You like hood? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I heard Eastern girls like hood. What? That's, that's what I've been hearing. Nah, I love, I'm like, I love, uh, I, I dated a hood dude with great intention. And I think to me, there was just something about his confidence mm. in anything, in any opinion. Yeah. And like, to me, I, I, I still have that, yeah. like, to this day. Like, it rubbed off on you in a sense? Oh, totally. Yeah. Totally. Like, I think there's something I've taken from, like, any ex-boyfriend or anyone that I've had close to me. I mean, but mm. that, to me, I always think about. But anyways, him and I would go back and forth, like, all the time on, like, just little, little, little stuff. Um, and then also, like, I like to do a lot of reading. And mm. I like to podcast listen. And I'm like, oh, that's an interesting idea. But I won't. But here's the thing, like, I can listen to a podcast that someone recommends. And that person's, like, a theorist or someone that talks about, like, you know, something. yeah. yeah. But I always try to find the counter to it because I think what happens, especially when you're so when you're so young, when, when you're, you're young, <laughs> no, it. but when you're young and you're yeah, yeah, yeah. you're kind of going through this finding of oneself and yeah, trying to get yeah, all intellectual yeah. and yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Um, not blah, blah. it's, it's always, important. It's yeah, always it's a great true. thing to yeah. be introspective. Um, you actually don't realize how easily swayed you are because when you open yourself to becoming introspective, you also open yourself to becoming vulnerable and easier swayed because you've admitted that you don't know who you are, right? That's crazy. When you say that out loud, you've all, you, when you say that out loud, there's a fear of the fear there is real. And I, you know, it's something that you have to feel like, like in my opinion. Um, but when you say that out loud, if I say to you, like, I don't know who I am, that invites that Every might invite opinion. you to tell me who I am. 100%. But it might invite a lot of things to tell me who I am. A lot of and so you're you're like coming from a vulnerable, shaky place. Mm. And so that's why I think I try to counter that. It might not work. It might work, but like with the things that I listen and theories that I hear, I always try to counter it to really see where I sit on it. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Um so yeah. That's just it, I think it's just all critically thinking about things. Yeah, I like to, cri- I like to critically think, but yeah. you know, how much of my thought is actually mine? 
But that's yeah. This can this car this can go back to like anything. It's, like it's the chicken. It's the, idea, it's the chicken and the egg. Yeah, the debate. Like where does it really start? You know. So um, I kind of just wanted to relay back to like your journalism experience. I mean, you wow, been we went. So we went like. You did like a whole. We went Hamilton, and like now you're trying to go back to Scarborough. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> All right. right. I could probably do that driving like you know, really quick. But anyways, um, yeah, I wanted to relay back to that experience. I mean, you've been in the 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 industry for uh, for quite some time. You know, you started um, or what? You started. Were you out west for a bit? Yeah. So when I graduated from J school, I moved to mm. Winnipeg. Oh. <laughs> I know. My condolences. I mean, you know West. Yeah, I was in Edmonton for I a I know. Yeah. And then, you know what's crazy? I went to Edmonton for the first time last year. That's crazy. How'd you like for it? For like three days. I was really? like, get me out. It's too cold? Uh, <laughs> nah, I think it was like April we went. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I stayed, like, it was it was fine. It's got it's got it its fine. you know, pros yeah. and cons. Yeah. You, you know, it was a little time. Um, I went to some botanical garden. That's what uh, I remember. Yeah, I know you're yeah. talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you took IG pictures? Yes, I you did. flicks? Mm-hmm. Post on the ground? It was when I was covering uh, the Amazing Race. Oh wow, wow. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, but yeah, so I went Winnipeg, and then I moved further northwest to Prince Rupert, British Columbia, mm. and that was a great experience. It was so much fun. Um, I truly believe that my two pit stops after journalism school were to expose me to Canada's like rotten history. <laughs> I say it's rotten. Crazy. It is nah, rotten. but it our rotten history and our um, very tarnished relationship with indigenous people yeah. um and so when i moved to prince rupert i yeah. was like uh prince rupert so basically i started in terrace yeah and i and prince rupert is like where i started and i went back and forth between terrace and prince rupert so yeah this. and like what connects is the highway of tears so the highway of yeah, tears of course is where a lot of missing and murdered indigenous women are there's like inquiry with that yeah um, and so I never would have known what the Highway of Tears was. I mm. never would have known, you know, a lot of the issues um, that still need to be addressed in this country where if I did not move, I would be drenched yeah. in that experience. Expose, yeah. And, like, even having conversations. Because I'll tell you, I didn't ha- – like, I look at my friends group, and <coughs> and it, it's kind of like a gut check of, like, yo, Kayla, like, how diverse is your friends group? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, obviously I have black people, I have yeah. Asian – like, you know, but I'm like, do I have indigenous people around me? Yeah. Um, do I have a lot of people in LGB, uh, LGBTQ plus community around me? Yeah. Um, yes, I do now. But like, it was a really good way of like, you know, who am I surrounding myself with? And yeah. am I truly getting the real picture <laughs> of what our society looks like? Am I really engaging when I call myself an ally? Like, am I really, really an ally? Putting yourself in those places, yeah. Exactly. I think um, and so that, that to me was, the uh, as much as I want, I got a lot of um, experience from a journalist's extent. Mm. Um, I got a lot of life experience, too. That's amazing. I think with traveling, too, is the best way to experience And black people don't things. travel. This is why. <laughs> I, <laughs> no, but this is why Diesel? I love. We do, but I don't, Not think, enough, I don't think. think it's visibly. Yeah. Like right. for for me going to Edmonton, a lot of us, yeah, things, a lot know? of us traveling is like going back home, like, like Jamaica, Jamaica yeah, yeah, Caribbean, yeah, yeah. wherever, yeah. right? It's like nowhere, like, and it's and I'm not trying to sound stereotypical, but if you know, you know, like, come on, you don't when you see a traveler, typically they're not of color, and yeah. and we don't because and I feel like there are a lot. There's a lot of travelers I follow on Instagram that are black women that are doing it and traveling. And I think why they're so passionate about telling their stories is they're because they're like, get that get passport board. stamped. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, that was like my experience um, with the amazing races was like, I was going different provinces, different territory. I was up in Yellowknife, my black ass. In Yellowknife. Yellowknife. What the hell's up there? Nothing but cold, That's but crazy. it was like yeah. the coolest thing ever. Yeah. But I feel like, it was amazing for me to be at the forefront of that um, coverage because it was a black person doing it. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, we need to explore more. Big facts. Yeah, but, like, let's also be honest. We're marginal. We are mar- in a, belong to a marginalized community. We don't have mommy and daddy's mo- money to go backpacking. What the hell is a backpack trip? That's that's a foreign concept for a right. lot of us. Right. I learned what a cottage was at, like, 20. <sighs> 
I was like, I thought cottage was like a country. What the hell? Yeah. All these white, my white friends yeah, all going to a cottage. Going to cottage for the weekend, bro. I thought it was a Say city. Word, word. I was like, what? That's crazy. <laughs> like uh, some of us don't have the privilege to do that yeah. stuff, right? And so for me, I think that that uh, yeah, tra- traveling while black is a very important conversation. Yeah. I'd love to. One hundred percent. I I think just yeah, traveling in general would expose you to different things, and I think. With me, that was, like, the biggest part of my growth. And, I like, kind of just relaying it back to, like, the, the residential school history and, like, the indigenous history that you learn, you don't learn that stuff in school. You will not, yeah. It took you to travel to learn about those things because, like, when I'm, like, I grew up in Saga, I didn't see barely any indigenous people. I didn't know a lot about their history. I go to Edmonton, it's like I'm seeing them everywhere. Mm-hmm. I'm learning about them more in my, in my classes and stuff like that. And so that's just a testament to just what traveling can kind of do for yeah, you. You know what I mean? It opens you just so much. Yeah. Talk a little about the uh, Amazing Race because that that's, that's an interesting thing. You know, yeah, I watched was, a couple episodes. That's crazy. Yeah, that's when I left my do. son for a whole month and became the world's worst mom. That's challenging. Uh, nah. Worst mom. Stop. No, I'm kidding. There was guilt, yeah, but mm. then I think what kind of was such a blessing was it helped me to um, define motherhood for myself. Mm. And I was like, you know what? My son's going to see his mom chasing his dreams, and that's just that on that. And motherhood looks different for everyone. Yeah. Right? I mean, no it, I'm sure to some people, <laughs> my motherhood looks <laughs> fucked. Yeah, this, that's just opinions, though. But yeah. Nah, but, like, it, yeah. come on now. <laughs> like, my, my motherhood is not traditional. Yeah. Um, But, no, Amazing Grace was amazing. That's all. That's all. Okay, that's all. Uh, um, yes. Nah, but it was like we left. God, I'm trying to remember the date. April, April twenty. Nope. Where'd you get start? Like, what was the Toronto? Okay. Yeah, and then we went to BC, mm. and like did a couple stops. That seemed like, like Victoria. I, I'm trying to remember what date. It was like April, April twenty third, and came back May nineteenth. Mm. And like we were staying like in provinces and cities for like two three days at a time. Yeah, and just on and on. On the off. plane, off the plane. And what was fucked is I just had leave. I got I gotta stop swearing. Um, I was scared of planes. There's something that happens to you when you You're have a child. You start you start really fearing like for, fearing for your life. Hypothetical situation. Yo, you come you over start your head. fearing for your life. And I remember the first flight after Levi was to Paris. Oh man, for two days. That's a long one. And I've never been to Europe. And it was like a seven hour flight. And I was That's like, crazy. anyways, yeah. I got real comfortable with the plane. Um, at doing the Amazing Race Canada because oh, I yeah, did yeah. like at least 19 flights during yeah. the entire time. Yeah. Um, but no, it was like the best experience. It was like a 40 crew, 40 people crew, um, and we just like became like family on the road. Mm-hmm. Like it was just so fun to like be with audio and camera and like production and like you know you're learning so much about what everyone does. Um, everyone takes care of everyone. It's fun to work mm-hmm. then you're of course like covering the racers and like seeing that journey but then you're also getting to see amazing things i did like this like bungee seat jumpy thing you did the bungee jump yeah i should oh show it to you one day gosh i've got to i gotta see that after that's and, one of my uh, biggest fears. and that was wild i zip lined it's crazy i went to, my black ass was in a kayak it's crazy <laughs> i was doing that's a mo- real cottage that's some mo- real cottage i went, I went right like on a on a snow ski Whatever. Like the, the yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, God, there was like just so much things that I did, That's and I'm real like Canadian type real year right Canadian stuff. And yeah. I came back to Toronto and covered the championship. That's what's up. It was really weird. You went out east too, like like Halifax. Yeah, went Scotia. everywhere. Had had lobster. Oh man, that's different right there. That's different right there. It was great. It was just such a good time. I can't lie, I'm a little jealous. You I'll should be. be. It was. Yes. It was just. I man, there wow. there are some experiences that I'm like. I am so lucky. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just the benefits of traveling. Like the benefits you know? of traveling, yeah. you have to, you have 100%. to have to travel. One hundred percent. So, for someone in your position, and for people that are listening to this right now that want to be journalists, Don't what are it. some? Don't do it. I'm Reconsider. Doing it right now. I'm, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> what are some? Keep your heart three stacks. <laughs> <laughs> what are What are some like tips or advice you give to the next up and coming journalists and even women of color? Um, just start. <laughs> just start. Just do it. Just start. Like we are mm. like at a very interesting point. I think where like media is what we make it, mm-hmm. and like there's no better expert to this game right now than than us. Like yeah. we have so much sway and power into what's popping that it's like insane, and industries right now are playing catch up. 
So I think for me, like the thing is, if you want to start a YouTube channel, start that shit. If you want to start a podcast, start that shit. But make it different because the, these spaces are so oversaturated. Yeah. So what are you making? Like, what can you offer to that yeah. space? Yeah. And maybe that's not a question. Maybe that's just being too specific, right? Maybe don't limit yourself. Yeah. Because you need to figure out what muscles you can flex, what range you do what have, works what, doesn't. what works, yeah. what does not work. Don't yeah. be afraid to make mistakes. Um. Yeah, I mean, I always am like, find a mentor, but I'm also like, find a sponsor. How about sponsors? That's a, that's a game changer. Let me there, put y'all yeah. on, the, on the difference between a mentor and a sponsor, okay? All is. A mentor is going to sit with you and have coffees with you and go over your <laughs> tapes and all the things. Here's the thing about marginalized communities. They're over-mentored and under-sponsored. <laughs> underfunded. We are over mentored people and yeah. underfunded. Just give us our things. That's all we need. So when I say sponsor, I mean someone that's going to be in a room that you are not in and say, you need to hire this person. Mm. That's Find all it takes. Yeah. That's all it takes. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a big part of it too. I think this is crazy because like every conversation we've had here, I've literally had with my friends over here. So really now that you're talking about mentorship and whatnot, uh-huh. I do agree. We're super overly mentored, but I also think that we're like our mentors are under experienced mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying just because you're oh, older we be than thinking me we the shit up here bro huh we be thinking we the shit up here 100%, the mentors 100 mm. percent. but this is this is the thing like just because you're my og or you're older than me doesn't mean that you deserve to be my mentor you deserve totally to be, you know but that's saying? your like, call and sometimes yeah. it's shaky for people at a particular age yeah. that are younger um to be clear about that mm-hmm. I feel like we're so easily swayed. We're like, oh, my God, X person, all this profile, all yeah. this money they must do X. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, but that. But then you get to know them. You're like, nah, that was a really shitty fucking that's, person. Yeah. And actually, they got close to me because they didn't want me to get further. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that happens a lot, too, as well. It's a mentality in our industry. When, yeah, it's, just, it's, it's cutthroat, for it's sure. It's cutthroat, yeah. but then you find the unicorns like a Marcy Ian who yeah. will advocate for you and who does not care, who mm. will open doors and look back and be like, yo, you coming too? Because, girl, this door going to be open. That's big right there. Right? And it's hard to find people like that. I think that, you know, people talk about, like, Toronto mentality. I think that you can find that mentality kind of anywhere. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Those instances are, are available anywhere. But I think we often see it most because we're from here. We see the city, right? Mm-hmm. A few moments later. Where were we? Um, I don't know. Mentorship. Last sponsor- sponsor- yeah, mentorship. mentorship and sponsorship. Toronto bucket. Like, no, crabbing, crabbing I will take bucket. the Toronto slander. Crabbing a bucket, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, that's, bucket. I hear that all the time. That's the thing that I like. I hate is this whole like wait for stateside um, approval before it happens here. That every I've I, spoken out about that and I've gotten in trouble. About it's an that, issue, so but no, it's some, it's some real it. shit. Like I think even as an artist, you need to get that approval from the states before Canada. And it's like for what and for why? Look at who our top artists are. That's why everyone moves to LA. We're export. We're known as a city that exports talent. Not really for creating it. Yeah. Before. It's, it's weird But we as hell. don't make our talent feel safe. That's that's a whole different conversation, too. But it's a necessary conversation. But safe in, safe in what context, though? Safe in a sense of, you know, when I say safety, people are like, oh, my God, like, hurt? No. Okay, that's that's what I was thinking earlier. Yeah, like, yeah. we don't make our talent feel safe. We steal, not we, I don't want to generalize. People steal ideas. Oh, People man. steal songs. Yeah. People, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, there's that. Oh, man. People don't want to see people climb. People don't want to see people succeed. So they do anything in their power to tear them down because it's kind of that, that there's that mentality of the there can only be one. One, yeah. And that's hard. What's crazy is like, you know, listen, like I used to travel to the States all the time with work. So I would be around companies like the ESPNs, um, you know, Leisure Report, all that stuff. Yeah. And I'd be around black women all the time, and not a single one of them was like, yo, who's this? There was room for all. They're accepting, yeah. Accepting. Yeah. And I think that that, I, I feel like that even goes back to, like, education. When you look at, like, HBCUs and that culture there, like, there's, like, this cultivated network of, like, yo, you need a lawyer? Lawyer? Got a black lawyer. You need a doctor? Got a black doctor. We don't really have that established network in Toronto yet. It's it's crazy, but I feel like it's it's coming, yeah. And I think a lot of it had to do with the Black Lives Matter movement. Like, even... And this is what makes me, like, again, unfortunate circumstance, but it makes me excited. Yeah. Because I feel like we are getting to that point where, like... 
let's get organized. Yeah. And that was the biggest thing is like we cannot mobilize unless we are organized. organized. Yeah. So y'all, we gotta organize, share our resources. The numbers are there. The numbers are there. Yeah. We make shit pop. One hundred percent. But like then you have pages like Black on TO and, and things like that that are helping that that movement. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Um it all comes down to uh, a concept of group economics. Yeah. So just basically circulating our dollar. I seen a stat because one of my friends actually has a page. What was what's it called again, bro? Um it's not Black on TO. Black Dollars CO. Mm. It's, run, it's run by Juwan. Uh, he's a he's a CFL player. Yes, right I know Juwan. Juwan. You know what mm-hmm. I'm talking about? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's a, that's like those type of pages are like what would help kind of push that movement forward. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's crucial for us. Yeah. At the end of the day. So yeah, yeah. You know getting there. We're getting, getting there. there. We're getting there. So before we end this uh, this lovely discussion, I just was it actually I good? I love Did you, you feel man. like you got something out of this discussion? Hundred percent. Did you feel like you got something out of this? Of course it did. This is great. Okay. I got a great seat. <laughs> <laughs> Comfy chairs. I got artwork. It was great. I got one question for you. What's up? <laughs> one question. It's one question, we're out of here. Why? Wait, why do you have this? Why are you getting ready for this one question? question? I just gotta get myself ready, you know what I'm saying? We, we're here. Okay, what's the question? Where do you see Kayla oh God. in five years down the line? Five years? Let's say five no, years. let's dream bigger. You want to do bigger? Five years. We'll say we'll say, we'll say ten. Where, Where do, do you see, see yourself now? ten years from now? After everything you've done right now, what what's the next steps for Kayla Gray? Uh, no. I never thought about no, I'm kidding. I have I yeah. have I have thought about things. Um listen, do I want to stay in, in front of the camera forever? I'll lay it out right here. Nope. Mm. So maybe a transition. Into? Can you tell us a little bit? Uh-huh. Ah, I like it. <laughs> I like it. TBD. I like it. Jeez. And on that note, um, appreciate you guys tuning in. Oh, I completely forgot. Um, speaking on black businesses. Is that mine? Yeah, That's some beautiful here. packaging. This is amazing. It's Island Sauce Barbecue. Um, they're black owned, based in Toronto as well too. So if you don't have a bottle, get it. I know we're tired of the Diana sauce. I know you are. I know I am. Ain't nobody having you Diana. Nobody put some real with real seasoning to have Diana. So again, grab yourself a bottle. I mean, we're going into quarantine. A lot more cooking is getting done. So, you know, uh, it's there for you. I got one for you after this. So Yay! <laughs> I like when I come somewhere and I leave with free stuff. This way. Because I am cheap. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Um, Any last words? Thank you for having me. No problem. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Appreciate it. And on that note, we out. <laughs>